Revelation 1, 10 through 20. In Re Revelation chapter 1, you got the Apostle John seeing the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified body. And in Revelation 1, 10, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So John sees... The glorified Lord Jesus Christ. John was, this is John the Apostle. And he was in exile on the isle that is called Patmos. He was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he sees the glorified Lord Jesus Christ. And as the disciple whom Jesus loved, as it calls him in John 20 and verse 2, he's a picture of the church. He is the one who leaned on Jesus' breast at supper, John 21, 20. John is the apostle that the Lord put his mother under the care of in John 19, 26. And no doubt, Jesus Christ and John had a special relationship, and it's very clear what they meant to each other. John is the one who said, we love him because he first loved us in 1 John 4, 19. <clears throat> So I want to use the events and reactions of John in Revelation 1 to show what seeing the Lord Jesus should mean to you. He is a voice, he's a purpose, and he is sunshine at the end of the tunnel. So the first thing he should, the seeing the Lord Jesus Christ should mean to you is the sound of a voice. In Revelation 1, 10 and 15... It said in Revelation 1.10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. In Revelation 1.15, it said, And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burn in, his fur burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So John, feeling all alone in exile, hears the sound of a voice, and he's in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He's been carried forward in time to see the day of the Lord. And this is a voice, a voice that is fearful. John said the voice was as of a trumpet. When I was all alone, Jesus Christ was a voice. When I saw Jesus Christ, he was a voice, feeling all alone and empty. He was the one who cared enough to speak to me. I remember as a lost kid, my grandparents would tell me about the Lord coming back, and about a trumpet sounding. So anytime I'd hear a train or alarming sound outside, I'd run to see if my grandparents were still there. I thought I'd been left behind. I didn't understand the rapture. I didn't know the difference between the rapture and the second coming or anything like that. I just knew that they had told me the, the Lord was going to come and there was going to be a trumpet sound and that they were going to be gone. With the Bible, the Lord, salvation, heaven, and hell... All that was a fearful thing to me. So I believe this voice is a fearful thing. It sounds like a trumpet. Any type of trumpet sound I might have heard or just a loud sound or a train sound, I thought, well, the rapture's happened, and I was afraid. And the Bible describes the Lord's voice in other ways, too, like thunder. 
and John 12, 29. In John 12 and verse 29, it says, The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered, and others said an angel spake to him. And that was after the voice came from heaven, and it sounded like thunder. So his voice can sound like thunder, it can sound like a trumpet, it can sound like many waters. In Job 40 and verse 9, Job 40 and verse 9, it says, Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Look at Psalm 77, 18. Psalm 77 and verse 18. It says, The voice of thy thunder was in the heaven. The lightnings lightened the world. The earth trembled and shook. The voice of thy thunder, it said. And Psalm 104 and verse 7. Psalm 104 and verse 7. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder, they hasted away. So his voice, he's the sound of a voice. It's a fearful voice, a voice that is fearful. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, Hebrews 10.31. And as a lost man, the Lord had to show me that I was a sinner. He had to thunder with his voice and show me my lost condition. Just as Noah was moved with fear, when he prepared an ark, what did he probably start hearing when he got into that ark was thunder. And that's how I was the night I got saved. I was moved with fear. And when John turns to see the voice that spake to him in Revelation 1.12, he ends up falling at his feet as dead in Revelation 1.17. But then John said, and he said, his, uh, and he put his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. You see, I, the night I got saved, I was afraid. I knew I was going to hell. So I got down on my knees. I asked the Lord to save me. I knew that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins was buried and resurrected. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. But I knew Jesus Christ died for me. And I, and I said, Lord, save me. And it's like he put his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. Showing I don't have to be afraid. Because it's not just a voice that's fearful. It's a voice that always fulfills. You see, his voice in Revelation one twelve, and Revelation one fifteen, is voices as the sound of many waters. Before I was saved, I was having no hope and without God in the world. I was of all men most miserable. Ephesians 2.12 talks about how you're, you're without hope, without God in the world. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 talks about how if, if, if in this life only we have hope or of all men most miserable. I was as others which have no hope, as it talks about in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. And as an antisocial introvert, I kept to myself and never had much social interaction. But Jesus Christ was a voice when I was alone. A voice that was fearful, a voice that fulfills. And in verse 12, John turns to see the voice that spake with him. And that's what I did the night I got saved. I heard the voice speaking to my soul. And, it, and this was through the scriptures that I had heard throughout my life. I wasn't getting some revelation from God or nothing. It was through scriptures that I had heard in my life. And the Holy Spirit was bringing those scriptures back into my mind it told me i was lost told me i was going to hell and i turned to the voice and believed the gospel his voice is still fearful but as a born-again believer it isn't a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god anymore now i'm part of his hand and no man can pluck me out john 10 29 now i'm fulfilled john also described it as a sound of many waters and he is that living water, John 4, 11. The same voice that said, let there be light, is the same one that filled the God-sized hole in me and quenched the thirst. The vo you, you would suspect that the voice that sounds like many waters can quench your thirst. So, 
what seeing Jesus Christ means to me and should mean to you is the sound of a voice. Maybe you've been without the sound of a voice, but he's a voice that's fearful, a voice that always fulfills. Now, the next thing, what seeing Jesus Christ meant to me was the start of a purpose. In Revelation 111, what you got with John in Revelation 111 is, the Lord looked at him and said, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So, immediately the Lord gives John a job to do. Immediately, upon seeing him, he gives him a job to do. He tells John to write to seven churches, and these churches are actual churches in John's day. Prophetically, they're going to be churches in the tribulation. But John had a lot of writing to do. Immediately after getting saved, I had a lot of work to do. To me, the Lord means a purpose and a reason for living. And in Revelation 4.11, it shows we are created for His pleasure. And some things that He wants me to do are speak to other saints. You see, in verse 12 through 13, it says, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And this is the glorified Christ. He just told John that he wants him to write to the seven churches. And John sees seven golden candlesticks. And Revelation one twenty shows me those are seven churches, the seven churches that the Lord wanted John to write to. And Jesus Christ is in the midst of those seven churches, it says. This is te very telling of how he feels about local churches, if he's going to stand in the midst of them. And as a quiet introvert, myself assembling myself together, as the Bible talks about in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11.25 or uh, Hebrews 10.25, where it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, I believe you can use that practically to show even today we need to assemble ourselves together. Even as a quiet introvert myself, assembling myself together with the saints isn't an e wasn't an easy task. The temptation of isolation can be strong, but people are what matters. And see, the first thing that the Lord wanted John to do was to speak to other saints. You see, Jesus gave the example. He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Mark 10, 45. Because people are what matter. Paul said, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Philippians 2, 4. In Romans 1, 11, Paul said, I long to see you. He said, I long to see you. He wanted to see somebody else. He wasn't a lone wolf. He wasn't trying to get off by himself too much. John said in 1 John 3, 14, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. So there's got to be, there needs to be something in you that wants to get around other Christians. That's the first thing he wanted John to do was to speak to other saints. And the next thing, spread the word. Another purpose the Lord gives me for living is to spread the word. Just as John is given the instructions to write the things which he's seen in Revelation 119, he told him to write in the book in verse 11. And since I've been saved, I've felt the burden to write and record my voice to edify the saints. I believe the Lord wants me to get in the word and spread to others what he's shown me out of it. And in verse 3, John said, Blessed, in Revelation 1, 3, he said, Blessed is he that readeth. And this proves to be true because the more I read, the more I can spread it to others. But my main burden for my Christian life and what I do on here, wherever I'm at, has been 
get people interested in the Word of God. He wants me to speak to other saints, to spread the Word, and the next thing, sharpen my sword knowledge. As a lost man, I was always working towards something, but it was only things that were pointless and vain. But as a born-again believer, I have a purpose to work towards something worthwhile. John sees a sharp sword come out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and that, that sharp sword that he sees come out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has also given me that sharp sword. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. He has given me a purpose to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3.18, Jesus Christ means, what seeing Jesus Christ means to me is that I have a purpose and now I have dedicated, I've, I have a life dedicated to reading, writing, memorizing, and meditating in the sharp two-edged sword. Psalm 149, 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Before, all I had was vain things that would fade away, but the word endures forever. 1 Peter 1, 25. The same two-edged sword in my mouth and in my hand is the same sword that will fight the battle at the second coming. It's the same sword that proceeds out of the Lord's mouth. So Jesus Christ, seeing the glorified Christ, what does that mean? It means there's a sound of a voice, a voice that is fearful, a voice that fulfills. It means the start of a purpose, to speak to others, spread the word, sharpen your sword knowledge. And he's the sun for my darkness. Revelation 1.16 in Revelation 1, 16, it says, And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So John describes Jesus Christ and said, And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Malachi 4, 2 calls him the sun of righteousness, S-U-N. They call him the S-U-N sun of righteousness. And one day, that's what every eye shall see coming out of the clouds at the second advent. To me, Jesus Christ means there is a light at the end of the tunnel. This light purified my record. He's the sun for my darkness. He purified my record. John said, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, Revelation 1.14. White is for purity. Isaiah 118 said, Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You see, he purified my record. White stands for purity. You get around the glorified Jesus Christ, and you see him, he purifies you. I, I saw him, I called on the name of the Lord, he purified me. I was under the power of darkness, Colossians 1.13, but Jesus Christ is the light of the world, and when all feels hopeless, the Lord means, you know what it means to see the Lord? It, it means that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You see, when my record was black, and it looked like outer darkness, because that's where I was going, he gave me imputed righteousness that brought me from blackness to light, and eternity will show exactly what that means to see the Lord Jesus Christ. Because my vile body will be fashioned like unto his glorious body. So he purified my record. He proclaimed my victory. You see, John describes how Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. That's what he said there in Revelation 1. So to me, Jesus Christ means complete victory. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, but he's alive forevermore, and he's got the keys. And 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I went from someone who was always losing to someone who always triumphs in Christ, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. And one of the most epic scenes in the Bible is Jesus Christ voluntarily laying down his life to go to death, snatch his keys, 
He got victory over death, hell, and the grave for me. He took my hell on the cross. And if he took my hell on the cross, no wonder his feet were like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace, Revelation 1.15, because hell is a furnace of fire. So Jesus Christ, he got victory for me. He proclaimed my victory. He was he that liveth and was he's he that liveth and was dead, but behold he's alive forevermore. He got victory over death. He's alive. And the next thing, he put away doubts. He purified my record, proclaimed my victory, put away doubts. His word has put away the doubts that I had as a lost man. <coughs> Jesus said himself, I am the first and the last. Revelation 115 or 117. Jesus Christ means I don't have to worry about where I came from or what the meaning of life is or where I'm going. He's the first and the last. So he answered all those questions and put away every doubt. Before I was saved, I was walking around with no direction. Now I have the one living inside me that is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. He put away doubts. For years, I felt like I was in exile like John, or a prisoner in my own life. I felt alone and forsaken. To me, the Lord Jesus Christ means that I'm not alone in this world. He adds meaning and purpose to my life. He is the light at the end of the tunnel. For years, as a lost man, I was completely alone. I had no purpose or drive. But one day, I turned to see the voice that spake with me and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ever since then, I have had a reason for living, and I know why I'm here. He put away doubts, proclaimed my victory, purified my record. So he's the sound of a voice, a voice that's fearful, a voice that always fulfills the start of a purpose to speak to other saints, spread the word, sharpen your sword knowledge. Have you seen the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs>